I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World, and uh, normally I know we do video, but today we're doing audio because I really wanted to talk to this brother, and I wanted you to hear from him directly. Um, I've got Mr. Warren Ballantyne on the line. Warren, as you might know, was hit with uh, uh, with 22 federal charges uh, for various uh, types of mortgage fraud, um, and as many people uh, thought, uh, the people that supported him thought uh, there was more to it than meets than met the eye. Um, he has quite a story to tell, and he has emerged from the situation. I wouldn't say unscathed, but he came out, uh, I would say he came out on top. But I'll let him fill in the details. First, before we get started, I want to ask my brother Warren, how you doing today, man? Brother, I'm good. Happy to be with you, man. Thank you for the support, as always, boys. Uh, you have been uh, a true pillar in the black community. And, you know, when I was going through all this, brother, you always made sure I was okay. So I appreciate that, man, and I appreciate what you do. Yeah, man. Well, you know, I um, I didn't I didn't know what was going on. I it, it just I mean it really it scared it scared the shit out of me. Uh, it upset me. Um, you know, and, and those who are familiar with the system, they know how complex these situations can be. Uh, a lot of people assume that if you're indicted, that you definitely must have done something, but that doesn't seem to have been the case in your situation. Uh, tell us about that. I mean, fill fill in those blanks. I mean, what what did the judge say? Uh, when when they reduced the counts. So, and what exactly happened in your case? Well, basically, you know, I, I was found guilty by a jury trial. And uh, after I found guilty, we went in for sentencing. And when we went in for sentencing, I mean, the judge basically just walked through the whole case and said, you know, but the federal government was trying to put me in jail for nine years. They are trying to give me $3 million in restitution to fine. And the judge just kind of walked through the case and said, look, you know, based on the evidence that was presented at trial, Based on the evidence that I've seen, I don't think Mr. Valentine knew what these people were doing. I don't think he was a part of it. And if he was a part of it, it was minimal at best. Uh, and because of that, you know, he basically just said, look, you know, it's 20-something closes here. I'm going to remove 19 of these closes and just only focus on three. And the only reason I'm focusing on these three is because there was testimony that he told them it was okay to sign the paperwork. And that was it. And he said, but honestly... You know, I think he was a brand new attorney. He didn't know what he was doing. He made three hundred and fifty dollars. This man, you know, wasn't a part of this. And for everybody out there who doesn't live in Illinois because this, this is a big misconception. You know, are you a lawyer? You had to know what was going on. Well, in Illinois, we have title companies. Title companies do all the paperwork. They escrow the money. The lawyers don't even see the paperwork until the day of closing. So when I came into the closing table, the people had already lied. They had already um, uh, changed documents. They had did all that in advance. I had no idea they had done it. So when I came to the table, and they had already signed the paperwork, and in, in, in nine out of the ten closings that I did, the paperwork was signed by the time I got there. So when I got there, all I was doing was asking the people, did they understand what they signed? Was this what they agreed to? And they would say, yes, 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 yes. Now, I didn't know that the buyers were in on the scheme. The buyers, the broker. Uh, the realtors, all of those people were working together. They all were making, you know, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars. I made three hundred and fifty dollars. And these people said I knew what they were doing because some of them got forty percent off their jail time if they said I knew what they were doing. Others, I mean, I had two women testify against me who made over seventy thousand dollars. Multiple uh, folks changed the paperwork. They admitted it in court. Told the judge I wasn't there. Didn't know what they were doing. And the federal government never indicted them. But they indicted me for making three hundred fifty dollars a month. So you're telling me that that there were people who made over seventy thousand dollars who didn't get indicted, and you got indicted over three hundred and fifty dollars. Did I hear that correctly? You get that absolutely correct. But I was indicted not just for the three hundred fifty dollars. I was indicted because I was a national syndicate radio host. I was on the air telling people about economic development. I was telling poor people how to put their money together. I raised over a million dollars in a black bank, and that bank turned around and gave black people loans to create jobs in the community, open up churches, and send their kids to school and, buy, and mortgages for homes. I was indicted because I was trying to do something to help people. And the reality of it is this, boy. I, I, I got a victory in the sense that I didn't go to jail. I wasn't taken away for something I didn't do. But at the same time, they still won. They, they got me off the radio. Uh, I got a raise of one hundred forty thousand dollars. You know, people think, well, congratulations! I always see on social media, congratulations! I don't need congratulations. I need monetary help. Mm. I need people to bombard the White House asking for a pardon because basically 
even with what I had on, on this probation, I mean, the judge even was like, I don't even know if he did these things that I'm holding him accountable for. And, and the judge furthermore said in the sentencing, if the woman, and, and, what, and the woman I'm talking about is his, his name, uh, Marilyn Clyborn, and this woman told the judge that I should have located signed the paperwork. This was the woman who made over $70,000 to be dictating indicted. If she had not said I told her it was okay to sign the paperwork, the judge said he would have directly voted the count, which means that at the trial, he would have thrown it out because he said there was no evidence to show that I did anything wrong. Anything. Mm. Wow. So, <clears throat> so, okay, so in this situation, now it's funny because, you know, a lot of people would expect that if you – um, if you had this many, uh, you know, charges, uh, you know, drop, um, that you had the judge say something like this, you know, where you exonerated that you'd be able to walk away without, you know, without any fines, I mean, you know, and, and, and without probation, um, you know, how does that make you feel that you still have this debt to pay to society when it sounds like, you, I mean, it sounds like it would be very difficult to prove that you did anything wrong. I mean, how, how, how are you feeling right now about this? So let me ask you this, man. So, you, you know, you're going through uh, this horrible ordeal. Um, you know, you've been you, you, you got the greatest adversary imaginable, which is the federal government, because, we, you know, we, we, we know that they lock brothers up for nothing. Um, and, and, and you you have been uh, you've been close to uh, very prominent people. You uh, were on the short list for the White House. You would send them email. They respond to you, things like that. Um, did any of your friends come through for you? Uh, and, and, and what did, what did, you know, how did most of your, your powerful civil rights friends kind of react, uh, to the indictment when it took place? Well, I'm going to tell you, it, it was very disappointing because, uh, you know, nobody came to my agency. It's not Starkton, not Mark Morial, not Charles Steele, not Minister Farrakhan. Nobody came and said, well, hey, let us help you with your legal defense. Let us make sure you and your family get lights and food to eat clothing, uh, no, nobody tried to help me. I mean, only, the only thing I got through this whole ordeal was Joe Madison, I have to thank him, I got to give him all the kudos in the world, because Joe, he asked for my address and sent me a check. You know, 
Yeah, check me a letter and say, hey, look, pay your life bill, buy your family some food, do whatever you need to do, brother. But I'm with you. J. Anthony Brown, he came where I was at, did a comedy show, raised money at the comedy show, helped me out. Damon Williams, I got to say, what? Damon too. Damon did the same thing, did a comedy show, gave me the money to, to help me in, in, in my house. And, 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 and the reality of it is, is that I can count on one hand how many people tried to help me. Even, you know, I, I, was, I was employed by a law firm that was all over the radio with me. They turned their back. Everybody turned their back uh, on me. You know, a lot of people questioned right after that, why did radio want to fire me? You know, I just want to say for the record, Kathy Hughes and Alfred Ligon, they didn't do this. It was Gary Bernstein. Gary Bernstein did it. Because I was, I, Rich Media had took over the syndication rights of Radio 1. David Cancer was concerned about Plug Over because of the law firm I was a part of. So in order to kill two birds in one stone, because Gary wanted to get rid of that law firm on the radio. So he fired me. He fired me unilaterally. And the reason I know this is because a good friend of mine was sitting in his office uh, when Gary made the phone call to David telling him to do it. In fact, I believe David Cantor wanted to just take me off the air for a week and then bring me back until all this was over with. But Gary Bernstein pushed the issue and that's the reason I was let go. Now, let, why I'm not on now, the now. now let me let me jump in and ask you this. Uh, Gary Bernstein, uh, exactly who is Gary Bernstein? Well, he's a former employee of Radio 1 and he's supposed to be this syndication guru. Uh, but but he's, a, he's a 50-something year old white man who thinks he knows black people. Uh, and, you know, he, he, he fired me uh, you know, threw me to the curb, just like the law firm, just like all these civil rights organizations. Nobody came to try to help me. You know, nobody, no, nobody offered, nobody called, nobody did anything. It was for the blessing of my lawyers, who basically did my case for free. Uh, you know, if Louis Myers hadn't been the way he was, I don't know where I would have been. Uh, and, and, and the reality of it is, is you know, I had nobody trying to help me. I had people, you know, I will, I, I must say, I got to give Wes Parker, because Wes was like, hey man, your voice is necessary, you know, come be on my show. Ricky Smiley would put me on his show from time to time, I got to give him credit for that. But, you know, overall, financially speaking, nobody tried to help me. Nobody tried to help me fight this. Nobody, you know, and, and, and what's sad is so many people, unfortunately, especially black folk, whenever we hear the federal government is charging somebody, we automatically jump to the assumption that person is guilty. And I couldn't publicly come out and say anything because I didn't want to get the judge mad or uh, do something like Rob Bovoyevich did because I really think Governor Bovoyevich was innocent, but that he was talking so much that they put him in jail. So I couldn't come out and talk about the case until all of it was resolved. But anybody who called me and asked me what was going on, I would tell them, hey man, I made $350. I didn't make no money off of this. I didn't know what these people were doing. I mean, no lawyer in America is going to risk their law license for a minimum fee of what they would be doing anybody else's real estate code. If I'm going to be committing a crime, if I'm going to be doing something to break the law, I at least got to get a benefit out of it. And the government tried to make the argument well, you did it because you needed the money. Over a three-year period. Now, I want people to understand it. Over a three-year period, I did these 20 clothes. I made $8,000 over three years. That early, $2,500, $2,700 a year that Ooh. I made based on they clothes. Wow. $2,700. Wow. So, so they were trying to say that you were <clears throat> this big-time criminal. And you were making twenty seven hundred dollars a year uh, from from the, to all the closings that you did. I made twenty seven hundred dollars total if you if you average it out over a three year period. And, and the sad part about it is they did take me. And, and, and look, I, I could never read the Chicago Sometimes again because of the reporter at, at the courthouse. That that reporter, I believe, is working hand in hand with the Department of Justice because everything that the reporter reported and wrote, he wrote it from their perspective. Even when the judge. If you look at the, the articles on the day of you can say the Chicago Tribune to the Chicago Sun-Times. The Sun-Times purposely withheld things that the judge said that the, that the Tribune put in there. And they withheld it, and they put in it part of a $10 million scheme. Still putting that up there when they know damn well I wasn't part of no $10 million scheme. That's what the judge, this is like, I don't think this man was involved in this at all. If he was, 
if, if he was involved in this, it was so minimal that I don't even think he was involved in it at all. That's what the judge said. But that's not what the sometimes report. And, and this is what, it, it, it's sad because this is what the media does. Because that reporter is friends with that prosecutor. That reporter is at that courthouse every day. So that reporter wrote that article based on how the prosecutors wanted him to write it. Because they took glory in prosecuting somebody who was black, who was young, who had become an attorney, who was trying to help the people, and who was supporting his president. They took glory in that. And that's why God stepped in and, and touched this judge's heart and mind so that the judge would do what he did on a day of time. Wow, wow. So, okay, so you, you get hit with this indictment. Uh, let me ask you this, man. When, when, they, when they came to you with the indictment, I mean, did you know that it was coming? I, what, what, how did that go down? Well, well, basically, what happened was this, all right? That's a very good question for us because they called maybe two days before the indictment. They said, look, we don't do this indictment. We were trying to do a proper. Now, a proper is basically where you come in and you tell your side of the story, but it's not on the record, right? They gave everybody in this case a proffer, except for me. They mm. told me, we don't want to hear what you got to say. We don't care what you got to say. Now, what's crazy about all this is, like I said, the main witnesses told them when they interviewed them, well, Warren was sitting there 35, 45 minutes late. Warren didn't make number $350. Well, Warren was there when we changed the paperwork. Warren was there when we, when we conspired to do this. They witnesses told them this. And so they didn't even want to hear from me. They wanted to just, they gave everybody else a chance to, to talk to them in advance. But when we tried to do a proper, they didn't want to do it because they were so good on indicting me because I was on the record. Because I was telling poor people about economically changing. I was playing Claude Anderson on the radio. I was talking about Mr. Farrakhan's plan to just put one cent or 25 cents to the side every day to invest in your community. I was talking about the Federal, the federal uh, Reserve and how we get, get, get no more federal than the Federal Express and how we don't own it, how these banks are like getting rich off of us, the people. So when I start talking like that and I start raising a million dollars to help people get economically developed in their communities, that's when I became public entity number one. Mm. Wow. Okay. So, so I, I want to go through the sequence, make sure we, we, we know how it all went down uh, so we can get to present day. Okay. So, so you, you got this indictment for some stuff that, that happened over a decade ago. Um, you, you, as you're fighting the ordeal, many of the, uh, many of your friends, uh, your powerful friends kind of turned your back because they, they kind of left you for dead politically. They kind of thought that you were going to be a non-entity and now they're finding out that they were wrong. Um, you go to court, uh, all the evidence is reviewed. Uh, you do get the jury conviction, but uh, it was on what three counts out of twenty-two? Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, basically, the judge said, "Look, you know, this this twenty-two here, only three, I only pay attention to the three of them because all the other ones, there was no testimony about anything that this man did. And furthermore, if this woman had not said, I told her it was okay to sign the paperwork, the judge said, if she would dismiss the whole case if she wouldn't have said that." Mm. And it was my second real estate holding ever, mm. ever. Wow. Okay. So, so the, uh, you had the indi the uh, conviction on three counts out of twenty two. Uh, the judge sees everything and says that he's he wants to give you a minimal sentence because he doesn't even believe you did even the three that he had to sentence you on, but he didn't want to overturn the jury right. conviction. So you look you looking at a uh, three years probation and uh, this massive one hundred forty thousand dollar fine. So. There's still this this monkey on your back, which I hope people will help with. Now, let me ask you this: um, Now that you're back, now that you know, it, it, it's funny. It's funny, man. It, it almost makes me think about the, one of those movies where, like, it. Uh, it, 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 it is a movie. Look, I, I'll tell anybody. Look, this is a number one movie. If, 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 if somebody out there who's a movie maker, you want a, a blockbuster, or if somebody out there is an author and you want a blockbuster book, this story is a blockbuster book and a blockbuster movie. Because what they did to me, and what they did to my name, what they did to my career, what they did to my family, Lord Jesus, I hope nobody in America has to experience what I'm going to do, because they knew, they, they, they knew from the jump that I didn't do this, but it didn't matter. It didn't matter. So, you know, speaking on that, uh, I, think, I think it's important for people to just know 
um, just what you lost. I mean, we know you lost your peace of mind. I mean, I know that would be enough to just tear down anybody. But then uh, it was, you know, I mean, it seems like you, I mean, I know you were on the radio. You were no longer on the radio after that. Uh, so, so your career uh, was was tarnished. Your, 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 Name, but boys, I text at least 
seven different people who are prominent black people, who are supposedly black leaders, who have voices in me, and said, look, my life's about to be cut out. I just need to borrow a couple of dollars so I can keep my lights on. And I got no response. Wow. So today, so today, what I need more than anything else, man, I, I need people to help me with this 140000 They can donate by going to PayPal and typing in truthfighters at gmail.com, truthfighters at gmail.com, or literally calling the White House and telling them to support me because I, I need to support because I didn't do this. I shouldn't have a felony conviction on my record for something I didn't do. Wow. Well, man, you know what? Um, um, I, I know you're going to come back from this, and uh, and I know that you are going to be stronger than ever. Sometimes we go through the, the struggle uh, because it's meant to uh, lead to growth. You know, I know that the, the worst time, the, wor the worst time in my life was actually the time of my life that, that morphed me into the person I am today. If I had not gone through that horrible uh, year back when I was 28 years old, uh, I would not be the Boyce Watkins that, that people know. I mean, I would be another guy. In fact, you probably wouldn't even know about me because I'd be doing something totally different. I'd be playing the game and doing all this other stuff that, that people do uh, to survive. So, but, but see, that's what I love about you. You don't play the game. You, don't, you won't play the game. I love it about you because I'm not going to play the game. You know, the, the reality of it is, is that we have too many of us trying to play the game. You know, we need people to tell the truth and be about the truth, not playing the game. You know, that's the one thing. If you, if you look at the civil rights movement, I tell people this all the time. If you look at the civil rights movement, people look, well, we don't have a civil, we don't have what we had in the 60s and 70s. Well, the difference between the 60s and 70s is this. Our civil rights leadership wasn't tied to a political party. If, if you was Republican and you was wrong, they got on you. If you was Democrat and you was wrong, they got on you. They didn't have a political tie. Dr. King didn't care what, what Republican or Democrat you were. He was about the people. He didn't care about all this other thing. He wasn't trying to be a celebrity. He wasn't trying to be a superstar. What he was trying to do was help his people. Man, this man was about to lose his house and gave his peace prize money to the poor. But the difference between then and today, everybody won't be famous. Everybody won't be somebody of importance. Everybody won't have access to the White House. Hmm. What about the access for the people? What about, what about helping the people? Dr. King is one multi-millionaire. His estate didn't come to value until after he died. He died a poor man. But, but today, if you look around the so-called black leaders today, all are multi-millionaires. Mm. And then there's one of them. I mean, we, we, we won't even ask that question of, you know, I got so disappointed about the Baltimore incident because we were so caught up with what was going on in Baltimore that we didn't even see the beauty of what we did. We shut, we shut down Camden Yard. We shut down the Baltimore Orioles. Independent home games in Tampa and in other cities. That cost them $20 million between the city and, and Camden Yard. Imagine if we did that all over the country. And see, this ain't even really a black thing. This is a poor thing. And people don't understand that right now, we are developing into a straight third world country. Boy, can you talk? We've been talking about this off the air for a while now. You know, what about if, if God willing, if this president does right by me and pardon me, I may leave this country and never look back. Because <laughs> of the way that this country treats the poor and the oppressed in this in this country. Mm. Wow. So you said you might leave leave the country and never come back, huh? And this man, look, let me check this out. Yeah, I, I've had the privilege of going to Haiti, of going to, to uh, China, of going to Africa. I've been to Ireland. I've been to Iceland. I've, I've been other places. Let me tell you something. It's some good places that's not America, and you're not treated the way you are here. Hmm. Well, you know, um, I have to agree with you, man, and I think that people should definitely uh, open their perspective and look around the globe uh, because there are better places to live than here. Uh, last question I ask you, man, then I'll let you go. Uh, so what's next for Warren Ballantyne, man? What, you know, I know you're back and you're going to you're gonna get totally on your feet and get out here and kick and butt. Uh, what are your plans for the next uh, year or two? Man, my plan is to tell the story for, uh, you know, the next 
next couple of months. Uh, you know, I, I have a radio show that I'm doing on the weekend. Uh, and if you follow me on Twitter or Facebook, I always post where you can hear it at uh, online. And I'm trying to get that show picked up on the weekend as a syndicated show. Uh, hopefully God will bless me and somebody, you know, will take a chance on me again in radio or on television. Uh, because, you know, I, I lost everything for something I didn't do. Everybody ran from me. Everybody, you know, got afraid. Not because of something I did. For something I didn't do. And this was for something from 2004. Not 2013 when they indicted me, but 2004. And it was only because I was telling the truth. And so, really, I, I'll say this, you know, I'm pretty sure many people who are listening to this and many people who are listening to this, if somebody puts me back on the radio or back on the television, I'm sure they're going to have people who are going to tune in for life because they're going to say they, they had, I'm not even going to say they had the gut. They did right by me in the sense that I lost everything for not something I did, but for speaking up for my people. Wow. And... You know, if, if I don't speak up for my people, I'm never involved in this. I'm, I, I have, my name won't even be, if I, don't, if I was just Warren Valentine, the attorney, and, and had not spoken up and had not been on the radio, I never would have been in this. And the reason I can honestly say that, those people did over 200 and something of these real estate clubs, but I only did 20 something. The other lawyers that was involved in this, who made more money than I did, did not get charged. But I did. Wow. But I did. So you, you was the only one that got charged, and you did, and, and they did they did a lot more closings than you did. And, and, and I'm the only one, the wow. only one. Wow. Well, we we've learned a lot. I hope people are listening. They learn how the system works uh, from this experience. Um, I will personally say that I I truly believe that you were innocent in all of this, and I want people to understand that just because somebody gets indicted, that does not mean that they're guilty. Make sure that you know the facts. Uh, look into it to ensure that um, that you know what's going on and don't just believe everything you read because there's, there are a lot of people being persecuted. So I will say thank you very much, Warren. And by the way, where can people go to if they want to uh, donate to your fund to repay the fine? They can go to paypal.com, paypal.com, and type in Truth Fighters, like the word truth and fighters with an S. Uh, truth fighters, one word, at gmail.com. Truth fighters at gmail.com. I, I need help, people. Uh, you know, I, I thank everybody who congratulated me, but if everybody listening was just donating $10, I need help to pay this fine. And, and this fight isn't over because I am appealing this. Uh, if I don't get a part, I got to keep fighting this. And I need more to fight this. And, you know, couldn't say anything at first because of what was going on, but I'm, you know, if I was, you know, the one thing that I told the judge and the one thing I even told the prosecutor. If I had done this, if, if I had truly been a part of this, I would have came to him and said, let me help y'all get the rest of these people. Just keep me out of jail. That's all I wanted was to stay out of jail if I had done this. But I didn't do it. So I had to fight it because I didn't do it. Even when, when we went up for sentencing, my lawyer told me not to stand up and say that I was innocent. He told, well, he, he, he told you not even to say that you were innocent? Well, the reason why is because in federal court, if you come up and you don't get to culpability or your part in it, they can add points, which is more jail time, to your sentence. So my lawyers was like, look, if you, we know you're innocent, but if you want to and say you're innocent, he may add two or three years to your jail time. Well, when I got up there, I said, Your Honor, I'm innocent. I'm guilty of being ignorant to what these people were doing. I'm guilty of not understanding what these people were doing, but I'm innocent because I wasn't a part of what they were doing. And the judge said, I'm not holding that against you because I agree with you. Wow. The judge wow. So, 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 even my lawyers were shocked because, quite honestly, you're not supposed to get up there and do that. But I couldn't stand up and say I'm guilty of something I did not do. I couldn't do it. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Wow, man. Well, you know, um, well, I admire your courage, man. And I am very happy that you have emerged from this um, as a stronger, more determined person. You know, from, from me talking to you, I can get a sense that you are ready to go, ready to kick some butt. So uh, I want to encourage everybody, go to truthfighters at gmail. Uh, go, when you go to PayPal, put in truthfighters at gmail.com as a place you can send the money to. And as he mentioned, just, 
you know, $10, $20, just a little bit of money. It won't even be more money than you would spend on a trip to Applebee's. But I guarantee you that you're contributing to saving uh, the uh, career and supporting the career of a brother who is truly unique uh, in terms of his message. So uh, th thank you, Warren, for sharing your story, man. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate I appreciate those kind of words. You know, I don't I don't think that what either one of us does is really extraordinary. It's just um, it's it's what we're supposed to do. You know, you're supposed to represent the. Yeah, we're not supposed to be out here working. You know, we ain't supposed to be working for no corrupt politicians, for no corporations. We're supposed to work for the people. You know, and and yeah. so uh, my goal is to help people get that courage to do to do what you do. Uh, you know, every day, man. So. All right. Well, uh, everybody, uh, this is Mr. Warren Ballantyne. And once again, if you want to make a donation to uh, support his uh, payment of the fine, which I hope that sincerely hope that you will, you can go to PayPal.com and put in truthfighters at gmail.com. Me, I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World. And until we meet again, please stay strong, be blessed and be educated. And by the way, our Black Wealth Boot Camp starts on July 18th. So you can find out more about that as well at theblackwealthbootcamp.com. That's theblackwealthbootcamp.com. So uh, until we meet again, stay strong, be blessed, be educated. We are gone. Peace.